we've uh, recently been developing a Jamaru six-cylinder engine to take liquid-cooled heads. The head, as you can see, has got these liquid-cooled uh, heads here with the engine, and we've got the, a common rail water across the top, which is actually exiting, that's water out. And water inlet is um, three pipes on each side, which are feeding separate manifolds to each of the three heads. The water flows through from the underneath, uh, cools the head and then um, expels through this uh, common rail and back to the uh, top of the radiator. The radiator, the radiator we're using here is a, is a small aluminium radiator, only weighs a couple of pounds. It's off a 900cc high performance motorcycle. It's, um, as you can see, it's tucked in behind the exhaust here. It has no thermo fans, it's just relying on prop blast. And as you'll see in the test, it's uh, it's more than adequate. In fact, we could probably halve its size. On the other side of the engine, we've got exactly the same situation. We've got our common rail uh, water return here and three individual pipes feeding each head. As you can see back here, we've got an electric water pump. Uh, it's 80 litres per minute. It's, uh, more than, um, it's more than up to the task. And we have a switch that turns the pump on. In the aircraft, we'll use a thermostat that brings the pump on and off to regulate the water temperature. And the pilot will have an override switch just in case the thermostat fails. He can turn the electric pump on manually. One of the advantages of having the electric pump is after shutdown, when the heat tends to soak and elevate, we can keep the pump on, keep the cooling circulating so that the engine continues to cool even after shutdown. The thing too is we are measuring temperature in two places. We're measuring the CHD under the spark plug of the, under the exhaust spark plug here. That's on the exhaust valve side. So that's a typical CHT measured in Fahrenheit. And the gauge that that, that, that thermocouple is uh, controlling is this CHT gauge here. And I've already pre-calibrated the thermocouple in boiling water and that mark there indicates 100 degrees Celsius which is a little bit over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And here we've got water temperature down here measured in Celsius. Now I can tell you that this, this gauge reads around about seven to eight Celsius higher than it should. A thermocouple that's screwed into the water jacket via this banjo bolt here, which incidentally would be picking up a lot of cylinder head temperature too, being that this is an aluminum bolt screwed straight into the head. Here we've got oil pressure, and here's our filler cap here. So I've got the filler cap slightly higher than the cylinder head, so when I fill up all the water, the air, the air can bleed off. And we've got a little overflow bottle here as well. Okay, to start the engine, it's just a matter of turning on the master, the boost pump, the mags, and the water pump. So the water pump's now start, uh, starting to cycle, and we're ready to go.
So we've been running this engine for around, I don't know, 10 or 12, 15 minutes. And uh, you can see the temperature here. So it's actually reading, it's actually reading uh, 80 degrees Celsius, but this gauge reads a little high, so it's actually around 70, 72 degrees. And the CHT is right on 100 degrees Celsius. That's under the spark plug. Uh, around about 212, 220 Fahrenheit. So they're fantastic temperatures. Look at the oil temperature. Oil temperature is around 60. This engine is not using those fiberglass ducts. So all the cooling is purely in the water and the air coming over the cylinders off the cross. If you were to run this test on a Jabiru aircraft with standard heads, it would have overheated well and truly by now. I can run this engine all day long, wide open throttle, and not overheat the cylinder heads, the oil temperature, or anything. Because the efficiency of the cooling is so great that it's pulling all the heat out of the engine. It's running at these temperatures that, that we believe gives Rotax, the Rotax 912 its excellent reliability. And as I said, I can run this engine at full power for as long as I want. Okay, as you can see, the temperatures are running very stable. They have not moved. And you'll have to trust me on this, but I could run this engine all day long and those temperatures just will not move. The, uh, the CHT will stay somewhere between 200 and 220 Fahrenheit. The water temperature will hover between 70 and 80 degrees Celsius. In Melbourne here today, it's a sunny day, it's 28 degrees. Um, no matter what we do here on this test stand, we cannot get this engine to overheat. If you were to do this test on a Jabiru, you would have cooked it by now. Now keep in mind, as soon as we get into the air in an aircraft, we're going to have more cooling, even more cooling than we've got now. This is the worst case scenario for any engine, for any aircraft engine, sitting on the ground, running flat out, wide open throttle continuously. while I remove the spark plugs, or one spark plug from each cylinder, and we'll do a, a, a dynamic compression test. Okay, we're just gonna run a dynamic compression test on all six cylinders. Got a shade under 150 there. Yep. Exactly the same. Go. So all three cylinders are the same within a pound. Yep. 149. Yep. One fifty. Yep. So all those cylinders are running within a pound of each other. This is an old engine. These are old pistons with original rings, just without heads. We can see that with these cylinder heads, with them running at around 80 degrees Celsius, somewhere around there, which is a fraction of the temperature of a Jabiru air-cooled head, that these heads will never need retorquing. And the reason you're having to retorque the heads is because they're yielding. These heads are more structural, they cool better, they will not yield, and they will not need to be retorqued. We'll do a little bit more testing and then we'll do some flight testing and these will be available to all Jabiru owners very shortly.